you've probably accidentally stumbled on some sort of shortcut when you're using your Chromebook. And you're probably like, whoa, how did I do that? Well, I'm gonna show you my favorite and really my most useful touchpad and also keypad shortcuts for a Chromebook. With Chromebooks being the teaching device that is preferred by schools, it's just natural that we're going to phase out PCs, laptops, and we are going to replace them with Chromebooks. They're faster, they're cheaper, and we're able to replace them quicker because it's cost effective. So why not get to know this machine better? Hopefully you take two to five things that maybe you didn't already know and you use them religiously with your Chromebook. And the other thing that you can do is when you start the school year is you can have your students watch this video. I'm going to use the Chromebook simulator. I'll put the link in the description below for you. And if you don't want to show them my video, this is a different way to guide students through using the touchpad shortcuts and also the keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to get started by clicking on explore your Chromebook and we're going to start with the touchpad. And I'm gonna skip some of the basic ones like moving the pointer, but you'll see on the screen right here, it shows that if you just swipe on the touchpad, it will move the cursor on the screen as you can see. So dragging and dropping, what you wanna do with drag and drop, and I'm gonna do it with a tab, is that you're going to click on what it is that you want to move and then drag it. And they're saying to use one finger. Me personally, I like to go ahead and click with one finger as you'll see and then drag it with a second finger. It just makes it easier for me. So I like to use two, one to click and one to drag. With clicking, you can go ahead and lightly touch to click, or you can go ahead and press, and it will have a click feel to the touchpad itself. So those are pretty basic. To right click with this, there's two different ways that you can do it. With two fingers, if you go ahead and tap, you can see that your right click menu comes up. And then the other way that you can do it is you can also hold one of the alt buttons. There's alt buttons on either side of the space bar on my Chromebook. And so you can hold that down and then go ahead and click. And that right click window will come up once again. If we wanted to scroll, this page doesn't have anything to scroll on, but if I went to a page to scroll, you can go ahead and move your fingers up or down in order to scroll. If I go to my website and I move my fingers up, you'll see the page isn't moving. I need to move downward in order to scroll. And again, I'm using two fingers to do this. If I wanted to go back up, I move my fingers going up. So you don't have to use the scroll bar. This is a great shortcut. Once you get used to this, this is one that I use all the time. So whenever you are on a website and you start surfing and looking at different pages, you always would use the back button or the forward button that's up in the top left corner of Chrome. You don't have to go to that button anymore. You can go ahead and go backwards or forwards. So if I move my fingers to the left, it's going to take me back to the page that I was at before I got to that previous page. If I want to go back to my first page that I was just on, I can move my fingers to the right. So being able to scroll left and right with two fingers is going to be able to move us very quickly and very easily instead of going to those arrows at the very top left. This is one that I've used a lot with Chromebooks as well. And this is seeing all of the windows that you have open. So I have a lot of tabs that you'll see up top but I have another window with more tabs. And to be able to see this, you're gonna scroll up with your three fingers. So if I scroll up, you can see I have two different windows that are open. The other thing that I really like is that you can see up top here that we have new desktops. We can create new desktops. I have a work one and a personal one. And if I wanted to take these tabs and put it into a different desk, I can just click and drag that all the way up into that window. And so now I can switch from a work desktop to a personal desktop. Three fingers swipe up to give me that window once again, and I can switch to work as well. So between the three finger swipe and then going ahead and having different desktops up top, 
those two things I've really taken a liking to while using my Chromebook. The next one was one that I didn't even know about. To open a link in a new tab, you're going to point to the link and then tap or click the touchpad with three fingers. So this is different than going ahead and actually clicking on the link with just one finger. So if I go to my website and I want to go to my YouTube channel, if I click with just one finger, it's going to open it up and take me to that page. But if I do the same exact action with three fingers, watch up top, it's going to open up the tab without taking me there. So three finger tap, it opened it up on the side, but kept me on the page that I wanted to stay on. Kind of different, kind of neat. This is another one that I didn't know about and I use quite a bit now. If I wanna switch between the tabs that are up top, you're gonna to use three fingers and you're going to be able to move to those tabs if you move your three fingers very slowly. So move within your tabs up top without having to go up and actually click on the tab. Using three fingers and moving them slowly right or left will get you to the tab that you're looking for. If we want to close a tab, point to the tab that we want. If I want to close Google, I'm not on it. And I don't have to click this X. If I'm staying on my Chromebook simulator page, but I want to close this tab, all I have to do is hover over it and click three fingers, and then it will close that tab quickly and easily. It's kind of redundant because you can just click the X that's here, but if you want to just close it quickly and easily, just go up to it and then go ahead and close it by pressing or just tapping three fingers on the touchpad. So there's a couple more that aren't in the Chromebook simulator that I just wanted to show you. If you go to the desktop that's here and you take two fingers and tap, you're going to be able to see some shortcuts that show up. One of them is the shelf position. You can see my shelf is on the bottom, but you could position it to the left. So now it's over here. If you don't like that, you can move it to the right. And of course, you could keep it in the default position on the bottom. Along with trying to reposition the shelf, you can also have it so it auto hides or it stays. Right now, I have it so that it will stay all the time if I have a web page open. But if I want it to auto hide, I can click with two fingers on my desktop screen, click auto hide shelf. And now when I bring up a web page, you can see that shelf is gone. If I wanted it back, I could go down and just kind of hover there. I take my cursor all the way down and hold it. And you can see the shelf pop back up and I'm able to use anything on it. But when I leave that shelf, it's going to go away. So that's a personal preference. Me personally, I like keeping it there so that I always have access to my shelf. So I'm going to tap with two fingers once again. I'm going to click always show the shelf. And now what you're going to see when I go back to that web page, that shelf will stay no matter where I move my cursor. All right, that's it for the touchpad. Let's get into the keyboard shortcuts. The most popular one that I've made a video for is how to take a screenshot and also a screen snip or clip of any picture that you're looking at or want to get a picture of on the internet. So the way that you're going to take a screenshot of your entire screen is you're going to hold down the control button and you're going to press the button that is above the six. They call it the show windows button. And we'll get into that a little bit later as well. If you press both of those, you will see that a screenshot was taken. So when that pops up, you'll be able to copy it to clipboard and then you'll be able to paste that screenshot wherever it is that you want. And we can also click on annotate the image. So if you wanted to annotate it, it's going to go into Google Keep. And this is where you're going to be able to have the tools that you want in order to draw the attention of your audience to whatever it is that you want them to see. Next, we're going to take part of a screenshot. So I like to call it a screen snip or a screen clip. I've got a video that's been pretty popular that shows you quickly how to do this. So instead of just pressing control and our show windows button, like we did before that took a picture of the whole screen, this is going to actually darken the screen and allow us to just grab what we want. So I'm going to press down shift and control, and I'm going to press that show windows button. 
my screen has gotten dark. And now if I only wanted the keyboard, I'm going to actually click with one finger and drag with the other. And I'm able to just go around the piece that I want. And when I do that, you can see the picture here in the bottom right hand corner is the picture of the keyboard. Again, I've got both options to copy to the clipboard or I can annotate the image. If I copy the clipboard, I can then take it and paste it in any program that I want. When I first got my Chromebook, I said, where is a caps lock key? I don't know where the heck that is. Well, there is no caps lock key. There is a shortcut to turn the caps lock on or off. And that's the alt button and the search button. It's probably one that is most asked about when we need to lock our capital letters. So I've locked it. And if I start typing letters, you can see that they're all capitalized. If I press Alt in the search key again and start typing, they're all lowercase. How to lock your screen. A lot of Chromebooks don't come with this lock key that's at the top right. Mine actually does. If I hold this down, my screen will lock. If you, though, don't have a lock key, the shortcut for it is the search button along with the letter L. The next one is signing out of your Google account. If you're a student that's using a Chromebook that may be on a Chromebook cart and it's used by multiple students, you're going to want to sign yourself out of your Google account. And a quick and easy way to do that is to hold down shift control and then press the letter Q two times. That will completely sign you out. One that we probably know if we've used PCs before is control C is to copy anything that you want. So we can use control C. And if we want to paste it, we can go ahead and use control V. So if I highlight the word up top Chromebook simulator, I can go ahead and hold down control C. Go to my Google page and in the search bar, I can then press control V and it will paste that text. If you need to open up the keyboard helper, this is one that's tough to remember, but if you hold down control alt and then the question mark or the backslash button that's over here on the right, you're going to be able to open up all the popular shortcuts and they list them all for you right here. And that's it. Hopefully you have found a couple that you're going to use and like I said before, religiously use them on a daily basis. And hopefully it makes your Chromebook experience for not only you, but maybe for your students a lot more enjoyable.